Blasco will have his clock ready to work as we get back underway off of four. We'll send them back to work into one and two. They all punch the time clock, all trying to get back to work to the back bumper of the 100 plus of Brian Cook. As here comes 41 rolling down to the inside, trying to dispose and go to second. He will dispose of Roche now, half a point at the line for second. Alasco working the hub and working it well. The young man, pretty good behind the wheel. He cut all his hair off, a little disappointed, but if it makes it quicker into the race, he lost a few pounds. The 41, Dylan Alasco, feeling pretty good tonight. The hair isn't flapping in the wind, but the flying Hawaiian will come and snatch second at the line of 41 behind the winner. The 100 plus of Brian Cook dominates heat race number three tonight. Signing car number 44, former winner of this event in the Pure Stocks. John Ramirez from Corpus in car number 73 to the outside is flying Ryan Roberts from Crosby in the 2R. Cody winner of the Central Texas doing double duty this weekend. The Southern Texas Lake Model Series champion in 2019, Cody Leonard of the Sentinel, they're three by three by two wide. Oh boy, the party started off pretty quickly in this one. All kind of folks on the dance floor right now as they roll off a of turn number four. Back into turn number one, business picking up. 2R around the hub of the racetrack, he couldn't have slid the Holy Spirit. Now the skitter ties that time to 2R of Ryan Roberts. Double R rolling into turns three and four. Roberts down on the inside. He knows he's got a good race car. He put the fast one, Phil Dixon, in it. He wanted the Texas Motor Speedway Southern Dirt Track Championship back in September. His first ever factory stock start at the higher gun with the Arkle Texas Speedway set on the front row of the Cajun Classic. So Roberts comes in tonight, perhaps with a little bit of pressure on his, on his behalf. After Phil Dixon showed that he has a good race car, and the 2R will go to the race lead off the of four. Ryan Roberts to the race lead. Oh, and contact on the front straight away, a little bit of right side romance, some kissing, some kissing of contact, and they're trying to go four wide and three wide for second. Oh boy, it's heating up at South Texas tonight. Factory stock heat race number four presented by First Class Towing. It's a Donnie Brook early. In the three, they're still three wide. Jamie Deere just got pushed and shoved right off the playground. Off the four, down the boulevard, back into one, the 44 of Downey. Oh boy, and he gave him a shot in the shorts, and around goes Roberts. And that'll be all she wrote as the fun just ended for the 2R of Roberts. And he sent him spin cycle. And he will sit on Elvis Presley Boulevard just now for the time being. We'll see how this one pans out. Ryan Roberts will put his foot to the firewall and get the party restarted. Roberts leads them down into turns one and two, setting sights down the back straightaway now, receiving pressure for the race lead. It's a good one early tonight in this one. And we're now getting to five in and five laps to go to this affair. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Here comes the sitting Texan Cody Leonard. It's Leonard Skinner down the back straightaway. He's the free bird right now, rolling into turn number three. Here comes Leonard trying to pull to the back Dicklin of the two off for the race lead. Cody Leonard, the very versatile young man who's been absolutely impressive this year, winning the Southern Texas Late Model Series Championship in 2019 with a plethora of victories down at the Pleasanton, Texas over the I-37 Speedway. We'll see if Leonard can, dis can do something to dispose of the two off Roberts. He's flying out front, living up to his moniker. Here comes flying Ryan Roberts in the one. Roberts with the race lead, but here comes Cody Leonard for the top spot. The door off the exit of turn number two, and Leonard punches the time clock, and he goes to work a little bit quicker down the back straightaway, disposing of the two arm, pushes him back to second. Hello and goodbye, as the two arm, Ryan Roberts, will go back to second and can only look at the back truck lid now of Cody Leonard. He gone, heading off a of two now. It's Leonard Roberts, the third. Jamie Deere having a stellar performance in this one. Daniel Preston up working the wheel and working it well. He's up to fourth. So Daniel Preston, night number three, one of the Jerry Whitaker Memorial, has worked his way from the tail from eighth starting position to fourth, and he'll try to get one more as we're on the white flag lap down the back straightaway. Preston trying to dispose of one more. Every position so very valuable. We'll keep our eyes on third. To the checkers, your winner. Cody Leonard in the Sitton, Texas dominates it. Two of Ryan Roberts to the line. Deer holds off the six of Preston. Well, ladies and gentlemen, from eight to fourth for the car number six, night three. 29. 
Glenn Barber out of Robstown. He's in the 19B and rounding out the field, Melvin Kemp Jr. from Waco in car number 54. Lights are out, we're ready to go. Rolling into turns one and two. Jumping out front early as we got a couple of them coming together at the bottom of one and two, so we'll get this one re-racked. Uh, he will get you fixed up and get you to work. We're back on the way and singing a song full throat in the one. Off of two down the back straight. Here comes Josh Ellender. Ellender not selling her cheap. Here he comes in the 50 first lead. He got a little caddy office there and uh, hung the old rear out there. Try to give him a little tail whip. Ellender a little loose. He's loose as a goose, but don't get him started, folks. Here he comes. About to play some duck, duck, goose for the race lead, perhaps. The 50 trying to get up on the wheel now. 50 just leaving that left rear, just hanging out a little bit too high, wide, and handsome. And we'll see if anybody elects to give him a shot in the shorts. Here comes Triton Tipple trying to go to second. Working the outside of the racetrack. He's way upstairs. He took the escalator that time from the middle from the middle lane all the way up to the top shelf to the roof. Here he comes. It's rocking on the top of Corpus Christi rooftop party. Here comes the 99 Triton Tipple. Triton will keep trying. He'll thrash his way to the top shelf, back to the top shelf of the roof. And he cannot get by the 50. As the 50 Eleanor, nope, he won't relegate his advances any longer. The 99 rolling like a big dog like a big shot to the top shelf. And now he'll set his sights on the race leader. Steven Doty out front thinks he's minding his own business. We'll see what happens. Two of them have come together again. Nope, sorry. That's a side by side, I can't see. Get back layer here. Nonetheless, hit the one. It's all Steven Doty all the time right now. The battle for second and Ellender's went back to work and trying to pull uh, Triton Temple back to him. Great battle here in the fifth and final factory stock heat of the night tonight. Top 12 and passing points directly to the main event from passing points. And we'll take eight more of them out of the B mains later on. There's two laps to go this time. The battle for second, it's a dandy. Ellender, down the back straightaway. One of your top eight qualifiers, or top eight drivers this, at this year's Factory Stock 50 up at Arkwood Tech Speedway. Justin Whitehead's big factory event. Made 4,000 win, won by Brandon Brown this year. Hustling the way down into turns one and two. Temple still holding back the advances of Ellender. Josh Ellender, one of the good guys in our sport in this factory stock class. He travels quite a bit. And he's got one of these bigger event wins coming to him. Had his hands full of little loose in this one. As your winner goes to Stephen Doty in the 999. Second, we're going to track the triple putting on a show in this one. He may be your top qualifier. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, white flag. Kevin Sullivan with the checkers flag out for the 999 of Stephen Doty. Now he officially takes the checkered flag. The 99. That's a lot of nines. <laughs> Chuck Perry racing with a heavy heart in the court and the course like number 115. Scott Shipley out of Lubbock, Texas. Jim Blevins out of San Antonio. Eddie Martin out of Florida, Oklahoma. The big chief, Eddie Martin. Brandon Watson out of Denison, Texas had a good run at the Boot Hill Speedway last Saturday night. The four wide off the exit of two back here for fourth. Some contact around the hub of the racetrack. Tanner Whitmire, the 2017 winner of the South Texas Shootout in the 101 Western Flyer as a door to door for the race lead off of turn number four. Up on the way in the one. Chuck Perry, I mentioned, racing with a heavy heart. He'll get by and sidestep the 03T, pushing the second of Mechlicek. Going to work early in this one down the back straightaway. Stephen Whitaker Jr. has disposed of three. He started shotgun from 10th to pick up a few spots early to 7th in this one in the Contra Racing Church's Chicken 89C. Whitaker Jr. wearing many hats this weekend. He'll be the racer as well as, well, I guess uh, he's still a full-time promoter doing a fantastic job here at this racetrack, giving this place a much-needed facelift. And he will go to work the two-time South Texas shootout champion Stephen Whitaker Jr. from right here at the focus, working his way from the turn in all-black. 
Meklatek receives pressure now from Watson from Denison, Texas. The battle for second and the battle for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. That's a good one. Meklatek drove it deep off into the corner of three and four. Still on his back deck with the 68 of Brandon Watson is 68. In the turn number one. So Tanner Whitmire, the 2017 South Texas Shootout Champion in the Western Flyer Saints Ford. 101 out of Taft, Texas as we roll door to door off of four. Mechlachek way upstairs. Went higher than Willie Nelson on the cross country tour. Snoop Dogg riding shotgun that time off of four. We'll continue to roll the top shelf of the race sector. Three wide for second. Three wide for second. They settle down down the back straight away. The top shelf momentum continues to work for Mark Mechlachek who's giving it hell up top. Grinding the teeth, gritting the wheel, off the four. Meklicek holds him back. Sews him up something pretty in the one. Showing the quick delaying around the South Texas people here at his home. Speed plant down the back stretch in the turn number three. Meklicek has found something working and cooking up top as Chuck Perry feeling pretty good about himself out front with the race lead. Meklicek high side of the middle continues to work and truck his way into one. Still three wide for second. Here comes Whitmire. Whitmire around the hub of the racetrack. There's still three wide. Boy, you got a nice racy South Texas Speedway tonight. This progressively banked quarter mile speed plane is greasy and it is racy right now. White flag is out for the final trip for Chuck Perry in the one. First name Chuck. Last name Perry. He and his band are gonna roll down the back straight into turn number three for the final time. I mentioned with a heavy heart and remembrance of his father. Gary tonight, he'll score and win the opening eighth annual South Texas Shootout Heat Race number one victory. Chuck Perry wins it and dominates second. We're going to Meckler check in second. Shootout Tour Champion in 2018, Kel Westover from Altus, Oklahoma in the 44 drywall number 15. Cody Smith out of Coffin, Texas in the Martin Marine number 18. He is fun to watch. He came from 18th to finish second of this race back in 2014. Headed down the back straightaway. Smith has third in the three. We'll get you the full lineup. Oh, contact for the race lead. Crabtree just got into the shorts of Westover. Out of 118 of Robbie Crabtree going to be out front from the pole position in this one. So the car owner this weekend, he's got the hired gun of Chris Elliott. I'll mention that at Abilene. Not used to seeing him in the IRP race car. Dark horse shocks, orange number 118. He'll hold second. Cody Leonard just won the factory stock heat race and dominated it. He's working the Subaru Electric number 12 car into one. And it turns one into on the restart. Leonard gets a little cattywampus, corrals it down the back straightaway. They're going to work early in this one near the tail. 15W, Kel Westo from Altus, Oklahoma, the two-town Texas Motor Speedway. U.S. National Coach Track Champion from 2018. Rolls his way. Felt like he left something on the table here at this racetrack back in March. He's been snake bit in these big money races. Was leading at Boot Hill Speedway's 5,000 and a win in 2018. The Battle of Boot Hill and broke a transmission out front and commanding. That's still a quarter of minutes as he leads them down in the one. It's Westover over the 118 of Chris Elliott as Elliott give him a run now in the, off the exit of two. Ray Allen Kohanek, the sprint car ace who swept two ASCS sprint car races here in 2017 and rolled his way to third. He made the main event here back in March at the Gary Whitaker Memorial. He's got his hands full of the 12th and 20th of the Southern Texas Lake Model Series champion in 2019. So the breeze, Chase Breezy, sitting back in the fifth spot as we've got battles all over this racetrack and for the race lead, perhaps, as West Dover continues to fight off the battle from the 118. Here comes the 118 of Chris Elliott. Down the back straightaway, Chris Elliott, who made his name pretty strong last season when the Red River Modified Tour, the Abilene, Texas racer. The hired gun got the phone call this week from Roddy Crabtree, the golf course shocks. Number 118, Hill Weathers will win the for the race lead off the exit of turn number two. He'll sidestep the 15W of Westover and tell him to sit down and take a seat. 
Wester will have to obey him right now. He'll roll back to the hub of the racetrack and put the, floor, put the foot to the floorboard. But he has nothing off of four for the 118. He's setting sail out front now. But he got loose away at the tail in the 58 cent. As business has settled down just a little bit here at the racetrack. Off of four. Down the boulevard, they'll head to the two. Lap to go. Flags from Kevin Sullivan tonight. At the 118. Setting sail around the South Texas Speedway. Here comes Cody Leonard. Cody Leonard down the back straightaway. The bird is free again. 118 at Elliott. We're about to find out as we punch the time clock and we send them back to work off of four. These coons are out lurking the night. And off of two, and the caution flag will come out. It's going to be up to him again to get the field set forth off of four. The green flag waves and so on the way to one. And here we go. Leonard is showing that he's got something special this weekend. Had his head held high. He was feeling pretty, open, or feeling pretty confident last night. I talked to him in the pits. The white flag is out for the top quarter mile trip in the number one. Cody Leonard. Can he find something on the final circuit? It doesn't appear that he will, but he'll throw a hell Mary in the turn number three. And it will not work tonight as dominating heat race number two of the night. The 118 from Abilene, Texas. Chris Elliott wins it. And as well, Cody Leonard with a powerful performance. Houston, out of Indiana. Alan, Alvin Featherston out of Indiana in this one. Chad Fitzgerald of the Bay Town of the 211. Jeffrey Abbey, the Comanche Texas racer. Keep your eyes on the 37. Abbey, from Orange Grove, Texas. Trent Beaver in car number 14 as we're underway into one. And heat race number three of the night for the eighth edition of the South Texas Shootout. Limited modifies. The one by three, a one by one by three wide for third as they roll off of four. Fitzgerald has slid across the nose. Put the foot always good again. That time the team, the tail tank of him, the 14 of the front nose of Beaver. Shaman has jumped out front with about a half a straightaway advantage in this one over the Comanche Texas race with the 37 of Jeffrey Abbey. Over 20 victories this season. He has been nothing less than impressive over his own, one of his own racetracks, the heart of Texas Speedway and Wilco. Over the start of Dean Abbey, who will be in contention here tonight, just won 11,000 at the Hoosier Tire Southwest Southern Sport Mod Nationals in the heart of Texas and Waco a couple of, about a month and a half, about a month ago. Rolling off of four. The Apollo Towing Service, Wiener Spencer sponsor, innovative race car 2R. A race shaman is in the champion here. Oh boy, we got synchronized spinners down the front boulevard. What happens in this one is race shaman, 2019 champion here at South Texas, gonna lead them to the point and take the green, and he'll head down the front boulevard. still on taking place on the South Texas Speedway over here. Shaman just made a mistake that time. Will he open up the door for the Comanche Texan? He will not as here comes the top ball Texan of Garrett Gregory. He'll walk right to the threshold left open for him by the 37. The 37 uses that lane just a tad bit higher about a half a car up the racetrack to his advantage as Abby continues to repel the 48 of Garrett Gregory. Gregory still third. Chase Layden sitting in fourth in front of the 15 as Trent Beaver in the fifth spot rounding out the top five. Shawman getting around his home racetrack here and doing it, making it look good and doing it well. The battle for second is still the best one on the speed plan here as here comes 48 pushing the issue, trying to walk right through it again. 
37 leaves the door open for him and he'll walk right through the front door. The 48 and a hell of a bow for second. Former South Texas shootout winner trying to get back to South Texas Speedway victory lane. It's been quite some time for him. But the Tom Ball Texan just outside of Houston. Garrett Gregory rolls, repels, and he goes to second. As your winner goes to Ray Shawlin, it's all Ray Shawlin all the time. Your winner of heat race number three tonight at South Texas. Casey Bean just got collected. We'll get a caution probably early in this one. We will. Back on the way into turns one and two. Casey Penn just, oh boy, he chipped one of them. And he'll get into some slick stuff around. Goes Penn to the nine. Second time the nine has went on spin cycle. And that express race car is a little light underneath the feathers back there. of Rye. He'll try, but he can't hold back the 94 of Torres. Torres jumps to the race lead, but Rye going to fight back and drive a deep off into the corner of turns three and four, about ended up the course of Canna. Off the of turn number four, Preston just went to the fight. He's dead to the one only man to build after three and four. But no harm, no foul. We'll stay clean and we'll stay green for the time being. Didn't take the pin out that time. And the turns three and four, and the caution caution flag comes out. Locked and ready to rock off of four, the 94 of Alan Torres from San Antonio, Texas. He'll put the spur to the 94 off of four. Brian Rye. Trying to take back the race lead after he sits on the pole of this one. Was relegated to the second early. He'll drive a deep off into the corner that time again. About ended up in course of Canada before he turned left. Off the four, way up top, upstairs, the 94 Taurus. He'll lose the race lead by half the cat's whisker that time at the line. A good battle for the race lead. Taurus swinging it way high, wide, and handsome. He'll rocket his way down the back straight over here in South Texas tonight. Into to three, Rye. Wow, he can drive that car deep off into the corner before scrubbing any kind of speed. If you can enter the corner and exit and contend with the outside line, you know you've got a good hot rod. That car is stable and sitting on all fours very pretty. pretty. Got four new shoes. He's feeling pretty comfortable tonight. Brian Rye, former top five finisher of this event. We'll roll back to the race lead from where he started. And held about attendant here for the top spot in heat race number four of the night here for the eighth edition of the South Texas shootout. The three wide for third. Three wide and they're battling for the race lead. You need two sets of eyeballs, folks. Ball one of your neighbors. In the turns three and four, there's still three wide for third off of four. And that is not all she wrote. Jared Moffin driving the number two car, the Grazer Cycling Entry tonight. And it's on the roster, he's BD2, but I don't see the BD2 on it very well anyway. But the Grazer Cycling car's always gotten around this racetrack very well tonight. Moppin. Yeah, Moppin rolling down the back straightaway. The battle, though, for the race lead, the 94 from San Antonio, has kicked the spurs again on that hot rod, and here he comes for the race lead. Final quarter mile trip in the one here. And he race number four, presented by AOC Auto Parts, presented by HEV Manufacturing. Torres may have something cooking up top. Into three and four. Final time to the checkered flag. He's got to run up top. Here he comes. He won't be able to get the job done. You're going to go to Rye in 54. Jason, Jason Ingles on a long view. Text the owner and fabricator of IRP. Keep your eyes on the nine of Shady Bear. Shane Bear owner of Express Race Cars. It should be a good one. Cody Beto out of Corpus Christi, Texas. He's getting better. From a Texas Outlaw Limited Modified Asphalt Series promoter. Down the back straightaway. Early. 
You better keep your eyes on the 12 car of Ingles. Ingles, here in March, at the 10,900 to win, Jerry Whitaker Memorial jumped out front with the race lead. Jason Ingles popped the power plant here back in March as he had worked his way to the top spot and thought he would maybe be en route to winning $8,900 in the Jerry Whitaker and he did caution. As Merlehead has the race lead early, but Ingles is coming quick, fast, and in a hurry. Merlehead back on the throttle, getting this back underway here at South Texas. Bear got into the tail feather that time with a double deuce of Denby. Shane Abair has got a hot rod this weekend, but he's going to have to battle from the back of a deep row starting position in this one. Is here comes Dean Abbey, not looking too shabby, working it. The addiction number 26. The Eagles are closing it, closing it through his hip pocket. Eagles will go back to work now. It's all Merle Head all the time right now at this juncture, holding back the 12 of Eagles. Third is Dean Abbey. Here comes Shane A. Bear trying to go to fourth. He'll pitch it underneath the double seven of Cody Beto for fourth. And he's got it. Here comes Lafayette, Louisiana, Shane A. Bear. The all got incorporated DAM Service Express chassis, the owner and fabricator out of Lafayette, Louisiana. He, I'm not sure that he ever took a break last night. Caught up, got an interview with Shane, and he won at Boot Hill Speedway last Saturday night and had a hot rod. There was absolutely zero doubt about it. I think he has a flat. Abair with a flat tire on the left rear, I believe, of the nine. And Abair, wow, that was, perhaps I'm just tripping. <laughs> the nine car looked like he had a flat, but he does not. And the 77 walked right back by. He's got something going on with the suspension on that race car. It was sitting all kinds of funky. As now, how about, how about Cody Beddoe's just out here trying to make a liar of all of us? Cody Beto says, hey, why don't you put a little respect on my name, Zach Clark, and he'll roll right back and dispose of the nine of Bear and the $11,000 winner of the Southern Sport Mod Nationals. Here comes the 77 of Cody Beto. He, he's not looking too bad. Cody Beto rolling up the third now, and boy, if he can get up there and contend with the 12 of Jason Ingles, he feel pretty good about himself. As Bear now gives a shot in the shorts to the 26 of Dean Abbey, as Ingles now getting pulled to him by the 77. It's all Gregory Merlehead out front all the time, minding his own business in this one. He is set song out front and feeling pretty strong tonight in Double Deuce. I mean, some heavy, heavy hitters and heavy hitters in this one. And the outlier of Cody Beto going to work to the inside of the owner of the of IRP. This doesn't happen every day, folks. This is the Cinderella story right here in the works. Cody Beto, the former Texas, out Texas Asphalt Series promoter, who is still a rookie in his own right. He's certainly grown by leaps and bounds as a racer, but this is why you show up to the racetrack for the Cinderella story. As Cody Beto has worked his way to second, and boy, he's just gonna happen to run out of time, but Merlehead better be glad that a caution did not come out because Beto has the baddest hot rod of the bunch, and there is zero doubt about it. Tucked right around the hub, you couldn't slide the Holy Spirit between the Ute tires, and 77 puts on the show to second, Merlehead wins it. Finishing, finishing. Texas Motor Speedway U.S. National Dirt Track Champion on the pole. Outside of him, be Brandon Martin from Montgomery. Edward Oaks, so clear O, Texas in front of a 53. Sorry, Edward the 99. And the 90. I'm sorry, the 87, you know who it is. Job the Mattress Firm, sponsored. Ace Transmission, number 87, 39 years of racing for Lawrence Neklacek in 87. Neklacek had a hot rod here back in March, and he'll try to come back with some steam tonight. He felt like he left something pretty on the table here at the Whitaker Memorial. And a one, pitching down low. Here comes the 87, the veteran, Lawrence Meklicek, trying to roll to second. Won't be able to get the job done at this junction. Here comes the five-time track champion of the ATV Manufacturing Church's Chicken 90 of Dustin Butcher. Here comes the Butcher. Got the meat cleaver out, Dustin Butcher rolling. David Lejay Jr. starting from the tail in the nine car. He'll get two, maybe for the price of one. He'll get one of them to try to get the second as the ace transmission number 87 of Lawrence Meklicek got a Corpus Christi to second. Meklicek to second, putting Edward Oaks back to third. Now Oaks will receive company from the 90 of Butcher. And down to his inside, the number 68 of Brandon Martin from Montgomery. 
I'm impressed with this race track tonight. If you got a good race car, you can certainly get up on that hook for the wheel and go get it done. As Joel Garcia back there, the number 23 fighting with Leger up in front. The 90 of Butcher's gotten by a couple. He still sits fifth. The 99 of Oaks has his hands full with the 68 of Brandon Martin. Martin around the hub of the racetrack as they're all chasing the 87 of Metro Jet. And at least a little bit of the field with Tracy Jr. Back in March, said that several times tonight, but a lot happened here back in March in the Sparkling City for the 11,900 potential to win inaugural Jerry Whitaker Memorial. One of the biggest paying races in the great state of Texas for the limited modified division in 2019. The driver up front leading this race, who is absolutely no stranger to winning these big money races. Tracy Denby Jr. had probably the worst outing of his career up until Saturday night came around for the big money. And he's, he's one of those guys who faced tons of adversity, battled behind the eight ball, and ended up finishing pretty strongly in that event. And he's one you never want to count out when the big money's on the line. So the Viter Texan leads down the back straightaway in that express race car, firmly owned by John O. Whittington. The Altism Awareness Bruce Cash Motorsports entry off of four in that express racing chassis out front with the lead. Ryan Sullivan shows him that way in half to go. 87 of Mechlochek still sitting in the second spot, one of the fan favorites here in the Sparkling City. 87 rolls completely in second under the 68 of Brandon Martin still third. Fourth, the 90 of Dustin Butcher, the five pound champion, the 2016 winner of this event. Off of four. So it was two to go that last time. This is the white flag half a trip to go for the 15 of Tracy Denby Jr. Leger trying to fit a nose underneath the number 99 of Edward Oaks and putting back the fifth as they head for the final time in the 3-4. The winner, we know it will be the fighter touch and Tracy Denby. He dominated it. Second goes to the 87 of Lawrence and Neklicek. Oaks does hold off Leger back here for the fifth. Three. Caitlin Leonard, Aaron Letty, Michael Pesic, Robert Vetter, Michael Downey, George Quintanilla, Brad Wattups, Jerry Evans, EJ Gilpin, John Lietta, Jenny Barber, and Gary McDonald take the green flag. B main number one is underway, and we've got a heck of a race right through the middle of turns one and two. $50 tonight for the factory stocks. Green flag is out, and we are underway. And Barber in here to be side by side at the stripe as they come into turn number one. Glenn Barber on the bottom. Jamie Deere going to look to the outside. Coming up on the inside of that second row, that 14A, that is David Leger pulling double duty. This evening in both factory stock and limited modified divisions, he's side by side with Zachary Courtney on the outside. That young man going to be going to the University of Northern Oklahoma starting in May. Going to be majoring in high performance engine. So good luck to Zach in his endeavors. Right now running in the third position on the outside of turns one and two. Your leader, the 15D of Jamie Deer. Second spot, Glenn Barber. There's Zach Courtney trying to make his way around the outside of David Leger for that third spot. Off of turn number four, it's Deer. Barber Leger in the third position. And Zach Courtney rounding out the top four. Steve Grant Shrimper in that 21G rounding out the top five. Still side by side for the third spot down the back straightaway into turn number three. Glenn Barber looking to the inside of Jamie Deer now for the top spot. Deer going to have the lead off of turn four by a car length at the line. Your sixth and final transfer position is the 9C of Caitlin Leonard. Robert Vetter, though, Zach, up on the inside of Aaron Letty, the 93 machine. They're side by side off of turn number two. Yeah, Jamie Deer looking pretty good here, holding on to the top spot, rolling off of four, but he has got all kinds of company parking on his back door up on the porch. Here they come to one. Into turn number one we go. Look at David Leger on the inside now. Challenging for the top spot off of turn number two. It's Jamie Deer on the outside by half a car down the back stretch. Zach, what a run for Leger on the inside of turn number three. And you're seeing right now why we love the factory stock division so much, why we have big 10,000, why we have 5,000, but why they'll race for $750 and put some hard-earned lunch money. Top of six. These guys ain't even made it in, but I'm sorry to step with you. This is good stuff, though. The top six is going to make it in. Right now, that sixth and final transfer spot still belongs to Caitlin Leonard. She's got her hands full, though, Zach, with Robert Vetter in the V8. As the Newport Nightmare Jimmy Owens would say out of Tennessee, if this don't light the fire, your woods are wet right under. Off of turn number four, out front with the race lead. It's all 14 in the one. David Leger takes it away from Jamie Deer. Leger still your race leader into turn number one. Deer in second spot. Third spot, now Glenn Barber is shrimp. Or Steve Grants has worked his way into the top four. Going to be looking to the inside of Barber coming into turn number three. We've got one around over in turn number two. And it looks like we're going to keep it rolling. No yellow. We are going to stay green. We're halfway home. Six down and six to go. And Steve Grant's Pidgeoration Center back in September, probably one of the more triumphant Victor Lane celebrations in quite some time. Just moved back from 
White Oak took Hopeless Christie here to his home city. Go work now to the 15D of Dearborn. What a battle we have going on here as it's long gone out front, David Leger, but what a battle for second, third, fourth, fifth. Absolutely, those second four cars there under Grandma's quilt, as you would say. Zach Green, Steve Grants again to the inside of Jamie Deer into turn number one. That is so impressive how they can be so close without touching. These, these tires are great equalizer. We love the factory stock class, of course. And right now you're seeing it put to the test right now. I mean, that's just the battle that's been taking place for second, third, fourth. And you had to battle back here for about sixth, seventh, and eighth. It's an absolute log jam. A war being waged all over the racetrack and a bar your set of eyeballs. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Caitlin Linder, that sixth and final transfer spot. Robert Vetter in seventh. Aaron Letty is eighth. What a great run for that young lady out of Sinton, Texas. That's Cody Leonard's younger sister. Absolutely having a great time out here in the 9C machine. Doing a great job. Hold on, that six and final transfer spot. We got John Groby around in turn two. Funny, uh, we're going to get a yellow. Backing away here in South Texas. It's all David Leger right now, your race leader off of turn number four. Leading in that Derek Nasty Outlaw Racing chassis entry. As Steve Branch has risen his way, he rolls in the bridesmaids' honors. Mentioned multiple times tonight, winner, a very triumphant Victor Lane celebration with Nick Robbins and AOC Auto Parts Victor Lane here back in September. As the Corpus Christi native, rolling. He's like a big dog now, but he's got company. Getting back to his back bumper, trying to maneuver and get around for second again, the 19. So Glenn Barber's in the 19B car, we got a caution. Back and away live on RaceOnTexas.com pay-per-view and all you great folks in the stands here at South Texas tonight, the Pure Stock B main number one is back and away. Again, that Derek Ashby Motorsports outlaw chassis number 14 driven by David Leger Jr. tonight. Here comes Steve Grants the second. Steve Grants gonna go back to second now. This was him at Glenn Barber putting him back to third. Jamie Deere still fourth, the top four go to the dance tonight. Everybody else throws it on the trailer and we'll see you later on another Saturday night special for a thousand to win tomorrow night. $750 to win tonight for the main event, but we got to find out who's going to get to the dance. As Garth Brooks would say, that I'd have had to miss the dance. We'll see what happens. They roll into three. Here comes Steve Grants for the race lead. For the race lead, Steve Grants all over the back bumper of 14. Down the boulevard, they head off into one. The white flag is out. The final quarter mile trip that matters the most and Grants has got a big dog barking underneath the hood of the 21G for the final time in the 34. Grants going to shut up in the middle of the race track. Here comes Steve Grants for the race lead and the race win. Final time to the checkered flag. Grants not going to find it, but he put on a show doing it. 14 going to score the victory, David Leger. So Dylan Alasco going to miss it by one spot. He'll finish fifth in one spot outside of the top four transfer positions and he'll have to throw it on the trailer. We'll see him later for a thousand win tomorrow night perhaps. 74, Eric Ramos in 21R. Melvin Kemp Jr., pilot score number 54. Tommy Grimes in 41T. Jesse Sandoval, pilot score number 7. Before Chris Dudley, the lights are out. We're underway. Carter and Ellender in the one. The two by two by two by two all the way to the tail. Down the back straightaway. Heading into turn number three. Rolling into three. It'll be the double zero, Kyle Carter. Who's going to lead lap number one? The drag race to the line. It'll go to the 50 of Ellender. Eleanor, certainly not driving it cheap. He drove it in steep and deep in the 50 leads, but here comes the Conroe Texan. They're all flanked to the in and outs of him. The 50 of Eleanor going three wide for the race lead off of four momentarily. 27, hello and goodbye. And the old saying goes, sit down, take a seat for me, and they'll do just that. Carter, fading back to third, the 50 of Eleanor will punch the top clock, go back to work and try to pull the 27 to him. The orange rim entry. No matter the rims, he may just sling the orange right off of those rims. And the pick of the one. Got a key up here on top of the roof. As well, he in the 25 all, we got the window with us. And I don't mean no pun intended, Chicago style last night. Dallas Cowboys had a hard time, and it's unfortunate. But here at Corpus Christi tonight, where the wind is certainly kicking here in the sparkling city by the sea, it's all Conroe, Texas racer, Dalton Faulkner out front of command. 50 of Ellen, the receiving hill from the double zero, Carter again. 
The battle for the fourth and final transfer spots heating up. It's heating up. Zala Bryant in car number 74 in the turn number three. Rahi right now occupies. He owns it. Girl Estate's been bought. He washed up the racetrack off of four. Oh boy. Around right, goes the 82 car. Making a scenic route. Until it's backed over the South Texas Speedway Victor Lane poster. And he's got to come out of a B lane tonight, but he will be undoubtedly a factor when the big money comes later on tonight. He'll be fun to watch starting at least 13th, or 14th. That's where he'll start if he wins this one, 14th in the main event. So right now, the battle for the fourth and final transfer spot. It's heating up. Here comes the 13, Hammett. Hammett just disposed. He'll go to fifth now, go to work on Rahi, who sits in the fourth and final spot. And Rahi's still hanging it out. Oh! Hammett got a shot in the foot from Zahler. Zahler with a shot in the shorts. As now getting by the number 54, here comes Melvin Kemp Jr. out of Waco, Texas. Melvin Kemp is rolling now the fifth. The battle for seconds, a good one again. Carter to the inside of the 50. Caution flag will wave. No better than 14th if he wins this race. Should be fun to watch him later if he holds on. We're back underway. Hustler in the one. Nathan Raleigh says, holla at your boy. Rahi holds on, continues to hold on to the fourth and final spot. All in the tournament three. Kyle Carter knocking to the back door of the 50th Eleanor for second. Hello, Kyle Carter. Down on the inside of the 50 of Eleanor again as Rahi still has the baddest fourth place car of this bunch. Everyone tuned in watching on Race on Texas. Thank you for tuning in watching tonight. He's standing up here on top of the roof now with the wind is a whipping. Getting in the elements. For what it's worth, down the max straightaway. The Kenneth Montgomery came on music number 27 of Dalton Faulkner. And that DAF chassis, Supreme Vinyl Graphics, number 27 is rolling in the one and two with about a half a third of his and he's stepped out over the battle in second, which is a dang good one. Carter continues to fight tooth and nail, sitting in third, keeps pitching it down to the inside of the 50 of Eleanor as Eleanor's continue to repel his advances each and every time. Rahi still in the fourth and final transfer spot off the turn number four. And around comes one of the top chef of three and four, and we will climb out to get the ball to the will not. Send him to the motor school, folks. As my good friend Bill Kitchen would say, former folk announcer of mine, Rockwell Tech Speedway, send him straight on to the motor school in a 58. Two laps to go, shown from veteran flagman Kevin Sullivan. For the white flag, he'll come off of four, singing a song in the 27 car. He is stuck like C H U C K Chuck. Uh-oh. These guys only get races too hard for a second. They gotta understand they are in and in this day. Uh, Carter is giving a couple shots on the shorts of the 50 Ellender. That wouldn't be a couple of happy campers there if they don't go to the dance. Final time for three four. Carter's gonna sell it in deep and sell it cheap. Off of turn four. Here comes Kyle Carter for a second. He's gotta take it out the line. Kyle Carter with a snag of second. Says thank you, sir. May I have another. You won't get another between the of Parker for long gone. And that'll be all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. How about the battle for second coming down the line? That one row, that's one spot, one more row up. Evan Scott Shipley, Chuck Perry, Marcus Meklicek were underway off the of turn number four. Stephen Whitaker Jr. off the puck. All the way down here at turn number four. Good Mike's reception here. On demand and live on raceontexas.com. Whitaker has company to the outside of him, fighting tooth and nail down the back straight away for the race lead. In a three and four. A little bit of maybe slight kiss of contact there. The 30th Villarreal. They have rubbed it. Oh, they don't see Whitaker a little bit. Whitaker going to jump out and grab the snag with the race lead. Former two-time you not modified to career, Stephen Whitaker Jr. here at his home racetrack. The place where he's worn several hats here the last couple of years. This family is on. Our first racetrack has done a fantastic job. They'll hold on to the race lead.
making my way back up to the booth is Whitaker. Bill Lee, the best engines, and with the racing chassis, 89 C car, who the USMTS victories. Okay, the I-30 Speedway, a little something another coming at the I-30, or the Shady Oak Speedway and Goliad, Texas in 2016. And a couple of seconds, Von Davis Sherry putting the pressure on through 11 as they roll off a of turn number two, heading sights down the back straightaway. Sherry gonna roll the middle lane of the racetrack and put the 68 of Brandon Watson back to fourth. Off of turn number four. Chuck Perry rolling, he's up to six now in the 115. A silver bullet of Chuck Perry rolling now. Off the exit of two, down the back straight of the 68 of Brandon Watson for the back bumper to the number 38 of David Sherry as Whitaker Jr. all the time off the four with about an eight car length advantage. Power, Sainz Ford, number 101, Western Flyer. The battle is heating up for the fifth position. Chuck Truck Perry. Link to the tail tank for those trying to go 38 of lanes wide. Contact with the 38 of Shuri. Here they come, 68 of Denison, Texas racer. Brandon Watson going to try to fit it down there. Can't not get the job done. Yellow comes out on the race track. Foot to the firewall. Right here at his home racetrack, ready to push the time clock and send us back to work. Tanner Whitmire, the 2017 South Texas Shootout winner on the inside of row two are up underway. And David Shuri. Whitmire for the in-house and the out-house. And a wild chain of events. Back to work. They'll bring their stamps. They'll send it off a of turn number four back to the green flag. Steven Whitaker Jr. Oh boy, in contact with Reed Shirley, the 68. Here comes Marcus Meklachek in 0-3, rolling down to fourth. Marcus Meklachek gonna try to go to the inside for fourth. David Shirley just drove it back to Corsicana. Oh boy, he makes contact with the wall. So Whitaker still leads Memphis Villarreal in the 30. 115 to Chuck Perry. Looking good and looking well tonight. Racing with a heavy heart in the course like silver bullet number 150. Around goes Memphis Villarreal. Around goes Memphis Villarreal. A trip around this quarter mile. And the caution flag will wave rather than checkered. We'll see if he elects to throw both, but it will not be the case. So re rack them. It's the Silver Bullet Coors Light sponsored entry is up to second. And he'll work on the race leader Whitaker now as so he punch the time clock and go back to work. And here comes Perry. He says, hello, how you doing, Stephen Whitaker? They'll show him the nose down there and they roll off a two. Whitmire back to fifth. Whitmire's disposed at five, he goes back to five. And a three and four this time it should be. The checkered flag is out. Whitaker Jr. is going to win it. Better. Out of Corpus Christi, J.J. Jennings is going to be on the pole here in the one car. And the race on Texas.com, number 58, Hunt Flanagan's muffler shop. Here comes Hunter Flanagan for the race lead. Cody Leonard out of Sitton, Texas, at car number 12. They rock and roll down the back straightaway. Live pay-per-view on demand on RaceOnTexas.com. Rolling off of turn number four, the door roll for the race lead. It'll be the one of Jennings. Jennings spinning the wheels in the one. Rolling like a yo-yo with no string for the top shelf. Down the back straight away the one car. Relegating the events to the 58 cent of Hunter Flanagan. Flanagan a fight down to the inside of the race. Like the door for the race lead off of turn number four. Here comes Flanagan. No shenanigans, folks. Here comes Hunter Flanagan. Down the back straight away. <laughs> the 58 car is rolling good tonight. Cody Leonard, one round. Number one, the 12 cars working well. They're going to go three wide for the race lead off of turn number four. It's heated up. What a racetrack you've got here in the sparkling city by the sea tonight. The three wide. Here comes Cody Leonard. Wow. Two for the price of one. He gets the Walmart special. Sit down and please take a seat, Leonard says. And they'll have no other choice but to obey the young man, the 22-year-old, goes for the race lead. 
22-year-old Cody Leonard is rolling like Skinner down the back straightaway. Kyle Latch, a boy on this Friday night. In the three, the one of J.J. Jennings. Just got disposed of quicker than a Hillary email. Off of turn number four, down the front boulevard, they head off into one. Ray Allen Kohanek out of Corpus Christi in the three car, trying to work in grand third. Flanagan says no. Flanagan will fight back to the inside of the three of Kohanek off of four. Tyler Bragg and then the Abilene Texan and Kale Westover. Front of the 15, Kale Westover is up to the sixth spot and Bragg just washed up off of exit and 15 will go by and go to fifth. Up to fifth now is the 15 from Altus, Oklahoma of Kale Westover. Down on the front boulevard into turn number one. The 12 of Coney Leonard is set on K-I-L-L -L tonight. Set on kill is the 12. As Cody Leonard already almost halfway back to Sinton, Texas. Flag is out. Put a shot over a CD electric ace trader. Oh, content. Oh, baby. That's why we ask you folks to stay away from the fence. <laughs> you never know. As checkered flag domination for the 12 of Cody Leonard. Folks, that was a war right? point system implemented. It's not necessarily where you finish, it's about how many cars you pass to get to where you finish. It'll be up to Garrett Gregory to put his foot to the firewall or underway. The former South Texas shootout champion, Garrett Gregory, leads him. A little bit of kiss of contact. And down the back straightaway. Rolling in the three and off the four. It'll be Garrett Gregory leading lap one. Chase Laven, Doro Trent Beaver in the number 14. Down the back straightaway, Beaver. The outside line momentum works for him as he rolls into three and four with the momentum from the high of the lane. As the planes get to down to the city of a beautiful cool night here in the sparkling city by the sea, live on RacingTexas.com. Jeffrey Abbey, not quite. As we get back on the way in first class towing, heat your race number three of round number two presented by Mountain Dew, off of turn number four. Back on the way, setting sights off of two. It'll be the 48 of Gregory with the race lead. Here comes Trent Beaver. First name Trent, last name Beaver, about to build a dam off of turn number four. The 14 rolling, trying to pull the 48 of Gregory to it. Tom Ball, Texas, taking us to the green flag off of turn number four. Trent Beaver has a good race car tonight, and he shows it again. Having the 37 sit down and take a seat for him as Ray Shaman is back up to fourth, disposing of four. He's up to fourth, disposing of four. So it may be a, does have to be a, a game of Connect Four because the 16 connected with the right rear of Shawlin, but send them straight to Promoter School, except for Chap. Again, Garrett Gregory to the green flag, getting us back underway off of four with five, four laps to go. Here comes Jeffrey Abbey on the restart, putting the bumper to the tail tank of the 14 of Trent Beaver for second. Flake to the back bumper of the 48 of Garrett Gregory, living a shot in the shorts, look out off of four. Here comes Trent Beaver for the race lead. All the two down the back straightaway, they set their sights in the turn number three. Working down to the 
few laps that matter the most. And here comes Trent Beaver for the race lead. Not quite enough this time on before. Addy Lickers drops it in the third. Trent Beaver has got something working tonight here in South Texas. He'll come a little bit shy of that time. 37 trying to pick up the slack on the 14 right now. Nose to tail, top three, Gregory leading them down on the final couple. Next flag will be the checkers. Final time down the back straightaway, they'll take number three. Sorry, two laps to go this time, my mistake. So two to go this time by. Was the, one of the largest paying wins of his racing career in the 48 when he won here, 2012. Set his sights in the three and four to the white flag this time by. Garrett Gregory, who made many voyages on the United States. Eddie Ross on the pole out of Corpus Christi, Texas with Jared Moppin to the outside. Eric Krzyzewski in the 420. Outside, Thomas Blackwell out of Crandall, Texas in the 50. Casey Pierre from Shreveport. Casey Pierre going to look for a much better run here in heat number two and round number two. Or the second, <laughs> his second heat of the night. Not mistake, in the tournament three, 94 San Antonio, Texas racer Alan Torres. Out front, buys Lonesome is Ross off of four. One, two, three, off of four, the three wide off of ten number four, Dana Presser, way upstairs, looking for a piece of the derby. Krzyzewski, here comes Alan Torres, two for the price of one, the San Antonio Texan will put the Spurs back to it. He'll go to fourth, now in 94. Daniel Preston disposes of a couple, Brian Ryan loses a couple of spots in the 54. Ross still leads. Eddie Ross in the BD3, down the back straightaway. Jared. So it's Jared Moffin in the BD2, both of the greatest side of the BD and BD3 cars, which are, their numbers are almost impossible to read. I gotta get more familiar with those cars. And Moffin is your race leader in the BD2 with the BD3 and Betty Ross in second. Off of four, down on the front stretch they head. Moffin has a bunch of advantage over Moffin in the third. The Grable Texan of Thomas Blackwell, one of the nicest guys I've ever met in the sport sitting in third spot. Now on the back straightaway. Torres in hot pursuit, trying to go to third place in the 94. He started near the tail in this one. Torres started. Casey Penn has had an absolutely tumultuous night tonight. It's been a horrendous showing so far for the Shreveport Louisiana native Casey Penn. He's not down. The next three been looking for. Winner of Hugo Speedway yeah. last month. Hands full. First round just wasn't working. Two spin outs sitting off the racetrack and one or two. He's hoping to rebound. He has not done so. Halfway in, halfway to go. It's a BD2. A mopping. He's, he's mopping the floor with the competition right now. Take him out of the wheelchair for a rear end spanking. As the BD3. And Ross Hill sitting in second. So Torres still in the fourth spot, the six of Dana Preston. This one has settled down, not a whole lot of, not a lot going on in the checker flag away for the BD2 of Jared Moffin, your winner. Daniel Preston will come on fifth in the car number six. Fourth will go to 94 to San Antonio. Eighth to fourth. Another good performance for the San Antonio neighbor. It'll be Tommy Grimes in the outside pole. Bradley Haggard inside of two with Cody Petta, who had a great performance in round number one. We'll see what the 77 can do. Ryan Harris racing Jason Ingles. So the second time tonight that Jason Ingles and, Chase and Shane Abair have been in the same heat race. And it has been an interesting night, to say the least, for the nine and the 12 of this juncture. Rolling in the three. Also, Dean Abbey in this one. They all were in the first round together in the same heat. And we are, we're off of four. Racing this one of the sight center of Beto. Beto got up and walked the dog on both of those guys. 
in the first round. So down on the back stretch is Shane Abair. Well, I'm not sure spent five minutes out of his race car total last night during practice night. And I certainly had a pretty good indication that he would be a tough customer coming into this one. Obviously a two-time winner. He has been a, on a resurgence tour for his Express race car chassis. After a couple of, I wouldn't necessarily say down years, but this used to be one of his most popular race tracks. He sold many a chassis at this particular joint. And after racing the Super Bowl for several years, this wasn't quite on the scene racing these cars, which he once referred to as his money maker. As Shady Bear leads down on the back straightaway. The former Texas Motor Speedway Super Late Model winner back in 2013 in a Bob Pierce chassis and his own fabricated express chassis out of his shop in South Louisiana. The driver was out in a Lafayette. He won the qualifier here on the Thursday night here for the inaugural Jerry Whitaker Memorial back in March. And he felt like he left a lot on the table. And he has returned to South Texas tonight as a hungry, hungry hound. And he is walking like a big dog ready to head back to the swamp with a top out dollars in his right hip pocket. That's the ball nice action. As the battle now for seconds heating up. So Tommy Grimes is having a nice performance here, holding back. The 77 Freddy Bello, Chase Lemos can do nothing but watch that battle take place up in front of him from the second position he sits forth. Ingles on the Mr. Pro, Mac Pro Tools by Robbie Bradley. TSK Designs, number 12, with the Scott Shipley power plant underneath the hood of the IRV Racing chassis. The team is rolling around the South Texas Speedway tonight. Ray Ray Roll head behind Ingles, sitting in the fifth position. I'm sorry, in the sixth spot. Over the 26 of Dean Abbey. It's getting a little bit, a little bit of rubber taken down here on the head. And we've got Mark Zappi to beat the front rim. Oh! Bradley Haggard and bring the progress of Cody Pedro as the white flag comes out here. Final. Triple L. And it's Tim Hopper there for the driver that goes by the nickname of Shady Bear. Any too shady. He might just pull one out right in front of him this weekend and take him to the woodshed. Not sure, but we'll see. He got some of the best of the one of them. Tim wins it and dominates a nine. Tony Dunn with a great run to finish in the prize race on Triple seven of Cody Pedro. Another good run for him. And Racing Jason will finish fourth. Pushing him forth, the owner of Fabric Texas. David Leger gonna push the time clock, go to work and put his foot to the firewall and get us ready to play, we're underway. Leger, door to door for the race lead on the opening lap, the final race of the afternoon here before the factory stocks. They're one by two, oh boy, it's heating up uh, before. Leger leads lap number one. Damon Leger Jr. going to go to the, to the top rope of the racetrack. And around comes the 63 of the Myersville Rocket, Hayflin. Shane Hayflin. So they just came back to the noggin here. But thank you all so much. I hope you're enjoying your stay here. I hope you can come back and see us tomorrow night. Rest in peace to Miss Myatt. So rolling into one, it'll be David Leger right now with the race lead. Here comes the number 23 of Joel Garcia. It's Jerry Garcia off of turn number four. The nanny of Dustin Butcher. I mean, And the three, Leger Lees, the Robstown Texan, Dustin Butcher, the five-town champion off of four. Oh, and around goes Secure Lathan. Then Sapo again, and the caution flag by Kermit Sullivan will come back out. Back to the top hat, signs and graphics start line off of four. And a nine-hill Leger will throw it on the grill. And the Nani says we'll give it a give it a squeal in the three. The Nani of Dustin Butcher. Here comes Dustin Butcher for the race lead off of four. <laughs> with a heavy heart. We've seen what Chuck Perry's done been able to do to this juncture of the afternoon. As here comes Tracy Denby Jr. 
Brandon Martin off the face of number 68. As off of two, Leger swung a little high wide and handsome, but he's got the car cooking. About a half a length higher than the 90 approach getting around the racetrack nicely here tonight. The Bryan Texas race from the 23 of Garcia gets the throw by Mechlachek. will go to third. Oh no, he will not. The 23 fights back. Mechlachek will stand in down there. They make contact. Mechlachek gets into the 23 of Garcia. Cherry Garcia. will be blowing right at you tomorrow evening. Old Glory will be blowing pretty for us. As an honor, David Leger coming at you with the race lead back in the way here in the Sparkling City. How bad do you want it? The final race of the night for the eighth edition of the South Texas Shootout Qualifying. Lawrence Meklicek, 39th year of competing in race and action, and here comes the 90K of, or the 90 of Butcher now. But Leger, he only really wants to push the race back one less. It's working good and it's working well for him. Leger will lead. Oh boy, and around goes Tracy did me a very rare, uncharacteristic mistake. Wow, from the tail, went all the way to fourth, and Tracy Dimby, the top three right now underneath the top string of a Texas fiddle. The non-J of David Leger is rolling like a yo-yo with no string around the top shelf of the racetrack. Off of turn number four, Leger, two to go. Lawrence Meklicek up on the horse to put a whip to it. Down the back straight away. The ace transmission. All in designs. Mattress firm number 87 trying to lay another good one around the Corpus Christi quarter mile speed plant. The white flag is out. All over the back. Up over the back. Up over the back. Dustin puts it for the second. Off of turn number two. Down the back straight away. It looks like it'll be all David Leger all the time. And he raced the final heat of the night for the limited mods to the checkered flag and the race on texas.com innovative chassis number nine L. David Leger dominates second goes to Dustin Butcher on the last down number 87 and Lord Spencer check finishes in third for IMCA National Shunch in the factory stocks tonight from the front row the sitting Texan Cody Leonard on the throttle we're underway for 20 circuits here we go Italy Leonard and the 99 of Temple Temple has the lead he'll jump out to a Far length advantage in the three. The 100. You want to keep your eyes on it. Known to be a little bit of an aggressor back in the home state of Louisiana as they roll off a four. The four, five, one. Oh boy, and they're in the real estate. Steve Grant takes the seat across the field. Good to have this stuff. Look out, Steve. He's about to roll back into traffic. Hello. That's just how it looked on I-37 coming down today. Business as usual. <laughs> they're crazy in Texas. Off of turn number four. The 99 leads a Triton Triple. This young man is trucked between the Temples and he has got a hell of a race car tonight. It's Triton Temple. Temple is rolling about as high as you can get up on the racetrack right now, but at this point, muscles his way off the floor with the race in the number one. Velasco slices him. He slices it. He's up to the sixth spot. He'll go to fifth out. The Flying Hawaiian, the number 41, last year's King of the Hill. Top qualifier in time trials had the best lap time of 94 and 92 cars that checked in on the Thursday night of the 2018 edition of the King of the Road 10,000 event at the Greenwood Louisiana Oval. This show has show that he has plenty of speed. He's got the talent. He's got a good outlaw chassis. Built by Justin Whitehead. He's got the old Factor 41 shot supply on the dig. And the 41 car, SNS Fishing and Roll Entry, is up to fifth and he's cooking and he's working in 41. But out front, making the cake. And bringing the rest of the field on them to the party, the 99, the Triton Pipple. Now Trenton Mining is on business right now with about a two car link now stretching about to about three, four off the exit of two with the race lead, Temple leads. And a good early showing here for Temple as Cody Leonard, not able to do anything yet for this juncture, trying to go by the 100 of Brian Cook and try to go to third. Cook, cooking to the top shelf. And through the infield, it doesn't on on Adobe. He's done. Stick a fork in him. As the 41 right now, we'll put our eyes on the fourth, fifth spot. Flag. Look out. We'll get a caution. It's not turning the four. Perhaps. And we shall. And we will not. That's why you stake green right there. We'll send Ben Mikulczyk to the Heartbreak Hotel and to the middle school. All the same time. We're getting in two classes today, and the caution now will come out.
get ready to round out the final circuits that matter the most. Triton Temple out front leading here at South Texas. And here comes who? Dylan Alasco, the flying Hawaiian in car number 41. Here he comes, he's gonna try to take one to the woodshed. Here comes Alasco. Down on the back straightaway, car number 41, the Hawaiian is flying the night. Oh boy, look how Tyler Bragg back into the back straightaway wall. Bragg looked like he lost place. Split it. Near the retaining wall on turn number three. On the go on your smartphone. As Triton Temple gonna lead us to the green flag, get us back on the way here in South Texas. Still leads as Brian Cook has gone to second. Brian Cook has gone to second and a 100 plus. Oh, I gave OK Diller a phone call earlier to get that thing dialed back in to look out. Here comes Cody Leonard, drove it in deep. Sold a little cheap there. The 27 of Donald Kane raising some of the last thing in the general one. Ladies and Canes in the 2017 working they'll get disposed of the 41 of Don Alasco. The Willis Texas racer goes to fourth now on the 2017. Out of the group goes GW Hesson. Hesson loses a couple of spots. Temple still in commanding. We'll stay clean and we'll stay green. Down on the back side of it. Look out! 30 cars just lost it right in front of the field. Back and away in South Texas. And we'll see, here comes Donald Kane. And the 100 slipped up out of the groove. Here comes Dalton Faulkner. Dalton Faulkner up inside of the top five of car number 27. He's coming in quick, fast, and in a hurry. We're working down to it. Dylan Alaska is the third off of four. Here we go, it's heating up. And the two hard water slipped out of the groove. The 100 plus has slid backwards. Backwards, the 100 plus has slid as a 41 of Alaska on the back bumper of the Willis Texan of Donald Kane. Triton Temple just went up a little top shelf, but he caught the car. And the three wide for second momentarily. Kyle Carter. A pair of B-Main representatives, Kyle Carter. And a 27 of Faulkner. They'll be in the one by two by two by two all the way back to 10th. Down on the back straight away for a second. Here comes the flying Hawaiian, Dylan Alasco. Alasco on the 41 to the inside. Oh, baby, it's heating up for a second. Down on the front stretch. And the one, Carter. And the 27 and 41, two good friends. Let me try a little bit of a shake and bake maneuver here. But Carter looking to get by 41. It's 27 bringing the double zero and 41 along to him. Element from a B main in the sixth in front of 50, bringing the number 14 along with him of David Leger Jr. And 41 up out of the groove may have a tire going down. 41 at Dylan Alaska up out of the groove. Does he have a tire going down on it? The slipped up top shelf in the 41. Now his good friend Del Dalton Faulkner for 14th to fourth. And a fresh straight away. Working down to it. Working down the final few for 750 to in the main event. And 27 just broke the left front tie rod. The left front is broke on the 27 of Dalton Faulkner. Broke the left front tie rod, and he is going to have a hard time getting around the racetrack. It appeared to my vantage point anyway. And he's doing a good job of holding on to it. The toe is lean down on the 27. Kyle Carter's got a hot rod. Here comes Kyle Carter for second. It's hitting up. In a one. It may be a little bit too late because the fat lady is getting ready to pull the old microphone out and get ready to sing. As this time by, it'll be two more trips to go for Triton Tip Water Corpus Christi in 99-2. Donald Kane. Not raising enough of his last name right now. But he's doing a respectable job in second, holding back to the base of the double zero, who's coming fast and unheard, but the white flies coming up this time. Kyle Carter's going to force the issue and throw the needle. Here he comes. He throws an elbow. Eight times better than four, Carter says. And in the one. Oh, the caution is out. The caution flag way. Relight like the fires at South Texas, the final few laps of the night. Charton Temple trying to get the win tonight for $750 and hanging into the balance. 
Michael Carter going to follow Missile down to the inside of the double-double. Contact for a second, around they go. Ellinger squeezes by in corner number 50, and we got trouble. We'll see what happens as Kyle Carter just Dale Earnhardt, Terry Labonte on me. And Donald Kane, he's got a sweet tooth tonight. Josh Ellender trying to pick him up and put him down. And here we come, little white flag. Will we get this one in? Triton Tim with a little white flag. Ellender battling with the 27. There has been absolutely zero zilch. Nathan, no doubt on the table. As a young man out of Corpus Christi, 16 years old, will lead every single lap, lead every single lap, and he'll come across the stripe, and he strikes tonight at Corpus Christi. Triton Triple wins in 99. The driver of the KA suspension, number 99T, out of Corpus Christi, Texas, left no doubt on the table tonight, and it's a good hometown cooking. Let every single lap again, folks, leaving no doubt on the table. See, thank you. Seven, he just turned 17 years old. I sold you short, said you were one, you're younger. Nonetheless, folks, leaves every lap tonight. No doubt on the table, gets out with a sweet helmet. How about for Triton Tipple in 99 two. He undoubtedly has the coolest helmet I've ever seen. Look at this. Let's see this. Look at that. It's a little sweaty. That's a sweet helmet, folks. How about that? Give my hand, folks. Triton Temple and Victor Lane here at South Texas. 17 years old, young man, but man, you led. You left no doubt on the table tonight. Led every single lap of this main event. You had quite a few cautions there. How important was it for you? You know, not overthink it. Just settle down and hit your marks each and every time, and you draw a flawless race tonight. Uh, the car was on rails. I don't know what what better I could ask for. It would just to go everywhere. Great heat race performance set you up for this performance tonight. I mean, how, how important was that for you? I mean, you had to have the mindset to go out there and pick up every single position you could with the passing point system being implemented here tonight. Yeah, we tried to get to the front as fast as we can with the passing points because passing points means you start up front and you obviously want to start up front. So. How good does it feel to win one right here? I know the South Texas shootout's a big race right here in your hometown of Corpus Christi. It's got to be really special to win here in front of all the hometown fans. Yeah, I have uh, never won here, so... It's a good deal. First one, I know it's got to feel pretty special. All your supporters and folks here, man. Let's hear about all the great folks to help you out in this race car and anybody you'd like to mention. Uh, I want to mention uh, Chris, Chris, Robert, my mom, Jared, and, uh, and my dad, everybody who helps me on this car. Uh, Pro Line Fabrication, James Parks, uh, um, Blake Harris with KH Suspension. He sets up flawless shocks. I mean, best you can get. And best customer service as well. What year did you start racing and what age? I started racing last year at 16. Pretty impressive. I've been watching you in your progression, man. Uh, you're, you're off to a pretty quick start. Congratulations, young man. Well earned, well deserved victory. You left no doubt on the table tonight. Won it by several car lengths. Every restart, you hit your restarts perfectly every time. You earned it. Congratulations to you tonight, young man. Yes, sir. Thank you. Triton Temple out of Corpus Christi, Texas, scores the victory tonight here at South Texas for his first career victory here in the sparkling city by the sea. Hey, folks, y'all do me a favor one more time. If you're on your way out, y'all can head down to the Turn 5 Bar. If you'd like to have a cold one with your friends, you can have a Dr. Pepper for all I care. But uh, if you're headed out, we thank you again for choosing the South Texas Speedway here with the Whitaker family's speed plant here in Corpus is your racing destination tonight. Hope y'all can all come back tomorrow. That's the favor I ask of you. Y'all come back. Let's pack this place out tomorrow night. Bring some friends, some family, or tell them about it at least. Let's see what we can do because I promise you that the racing will be even Hotter tonight on the ra or tomorrow night on the racetrack. 5,000 a win for the limited modifieds for the eighth edition of the South Texas Shootout. And 1,000 a win for the factory stocks. We'll see if Triton Temple can go back to back and double up on the weekend as the 17 year old scored his first ever win here in his hometown of Corpus Christi tonight. Perry has earned it, and he, if he wins this race, will be a pole center for tomorrow night's 5,000 a win. The 12 of Cody Leonard as we're underway on the turn of the four. Derek Gregory, the nine of Shane Abair, the BD2. Of uh, Jared Moffin, the 0 3 of Marcus Meklachek, Lawrence Meklachek, and Ray Shaman in the 2R. Heading him down into turn number three. 
the trail of Cody Leonard, gonna jump out front and grab the race lead off of turn number four. The top eight cars here on tonight's action of both rounds of each. Shane Abair working down to the inside of Miklicek for fourth. Shane Abair sitting at fifth, 03 of Miklicek is fourth. In the turn number three, the 48 of Garrett Gregory. The 115 of Chuck Perry still sitting in the second spot as the 12 of Cody Leonard will lead. Here Shane Abair still continues to fight underneath Miklicek. He's about to be in a Miklicek sandwich. Lawrence and Marcus having them a Meklicek sandwich as A Bear continues to fight and around goes Chuck Perry! Oh my! Whoa! So he knows what the racetrack was just like when he was on the track as the 12 from Sinton, Texas, the CD Electric entry leads off of four. Garrett Gregory fired one on the restart to the inside. Here comes Shane A Bear, the 87 of Meklicek in tow. Throw a blanket, a grandma's quilt over second on back to fifth. Ray Shaman coming on the three wide for third off of turn number four. What a performance for Lawrence. Lawrence Meklicek will dispose of the nine of a bear. He'll go to fourth and pull to the back of the number 48 of Gregory as Marcus Meklicek. Around goes Chuck Gregory again. I'm not sure what happened to Chuck, but he has not been stuck like he was earlier tonight. And he'll get the caution coming out on him at the top. And we'll get back underway off of four with Leonard Skinner out front with the lead. Just look at the 12 the way he can get back on the throttle. Tote in the left front. Perry went around again in three and four. And he has got to be very frustrated at this juncture that car is not working the way it had. As Cody Leonard set on KLLL, on kill, off of four. The two laps to go. And uh, as the Mechla checks two and three. Son leads father down the back straight over Shane Abair sitting at fourth and the nine. To the white flag, this time by for the sitting Texas racer, Cody Leonard to the white flag. He won $3,000 down in Goliad at Shady Oak Speedway three years ago. The Southern Texas Lake Model Series champion in 2019 rolls into Corpus Christi tonight in the CD Electric. Ace transmission number 12, the 22-year-old Cody Leonard from Sitton, Texas wins the 8 tonight. He'll be a closer tomorrow night for $5,000 to win. Marcus Meckler.